Hello ladies and gents, uh, welcome to a new review. Behind us is the new beautiful 308 SWE. So probably one of the most beautiful wagons out there. Uh, and we're gonna check it uh, in depth, exterior interior details. I took a lure package instead of the GT uh, deliberately because I showed you the hatch version. Now we're gonna focus on the wagon. So uh, without further ado, let's just jump into the review. So here is the new Peugeot 308 SWV or the station wagon. Some people call it a wagon or the estate in their country. Now I think it's one of the most beautiful estates on the uh, market definitely. Uh, in front of us is the alert package as mentioned. I've chosen this one instead of the GT because I filmed the GT package in Zurich Auto Show. So if you want to see that, uh, check the channel. And I also filmed the GT pack uh, on the hatch version. Now in front of us is the plug-in hybrid with 180 horsepower. There is also a stronger version with 225 horsepower. And I'm not gonna be focusing so much on the uh, engine and that details. I'm gonna focus on the package because it, a lower package is well equipped for those who are on a budget. And I think it's a pretty solid deal. Uh, just to show you the uh, new key fob you have the new shield and on the rear you have the uh, unlock a lock and unlock the cargo uh, at the bottom uh, there is oh, you can press this and then extend a physical keychain uh, excuse me physical key that's inside the key fob that also uh, acts like a keychain now um, if we unlock the car you can see the base led headlights in the gt pack you would get the matrix uh, but I think these are quite okay. Uh, yes, the Matrix uh, look better and they perform better at night, but these are not that bad at night. Um, let's come a little bit closer. So uh, Peugeot LED technology, you have the LED projectors on the top, daytime running lights. These are a little bit different from the ones on the Matrix. If you like the car, you can see uh, they turn into turn signals or hazard lights. Uh, on the alert package, you get this in plain black. Uh, on the GT it would be piano black and on the front uh, you can see uh, you have little chrome strikes that are longer on the GT it would be like smaller ones spreading outside uh, you can see the new Peugeot shield uh, or the badge uh, it's quite elegant it looks premium there's a radar behind it uh, this is a blank in the GT you would get a camera on the front uh, 308 on the top and you can see the air intake on the top and a little bit on the bottom. Parking sensors are integrated there. Starting to rain, hopefully it won't be heavy rain. Just a summer rain. Okay, uh, in front of us are 17 inch alloys. Uh, these are diamond cut silver on dark gray. They have beautiful lug nut covers and Peugeot shield. Now on the alert package, uh, only on the hybrid you get the hybrid badge otherwise it will be like a shield on the gt only and uh, tire dimensions are 225 45 r17 now uh, looking at the top uh, you see there is a speaker inside there is a uh, camera for the lane assist and there is a light and rain sensor We get the side contrasting black mirrors. Now, if I back up, you can see the whole profile of the car. It's quite elegant. You can see you have a, a black line at the bottom and tinted rear windows. You don't get roof racks. You have to go for the GT pack if you want those. You can see the shark antenna on the top. Now over here is your type two uh, for the plug-in hybrid charges up to 7.2 or 4 kilowatts max I think I uh, tested it yesterday it was giving me max 7 but when the battery got a little bit warmer now this car also I have to mention doesn't make sense if you don't have the charge out charging option like an outlet in a garage or a type 2 at your work so uh, go for the pure petrol or diesel if you want that I'm definitely going to be wet uh, because I have to continue the review because I'm limited with the time I have to return the car uh, if we unlock the car you can see 
uh, beautiful. The back end is so beautiful. The sharp lines, just you can see there's a spoiler on the top and a little bit over here. Uh, these are your base Peugeot LED lights. Now on the Allure, they're horizontal. On the GT, they're like going to the side. Uh, you can see the 308 hybrid and you can see white LED uh, license plate illumination. You can see the little wide lens camera with the washer nozzle and the Peugeot uh, badge on the top. Um, if I back up, you can see the fog lights and reverse lights. Of course, fake exhaust tips, the real exhaust tip is at the bottom at the right. Now, if we open up the cargo area, you can see the whole car in the frame. Now, in Peugeot, you don't push down, you push up. So, you can see that is quite generous cargo space, very practical. Now, you can knock down the 60-40 or 40-40-20. And checking the right side, you can knock down the seats, have a 12 volt outlet, there's no spring. So I have to close the manual, there's a white light on the right. And on the left, you can also knock down and you have a grocery hook. On the sides, you have a net, so you can put golf clubs. Now this is your standard um, uh, wall charger for the shoe coat to type 2 uh, they didn't give me the type 2 cable now in Croatia this is the first aid and emergency triangle uh, and some spare bulbs which you don't use in the LED technology I guess um, you can see the other points there and here so all four sides and you also have the isofix points somewhere in the seat now you can take this out so there is on the wagon a little hook there. So you can see that only available on the wagon. You can see this is where the battery is for the plug-in hybrid. You have a little extra storage room. You have a patching kit there. Now this is flat. There's like a finger of height to the loading area. But if it's raining like it is now, uh, you can sit back, relax, you're covered. Uh, I'm going to keep continuing the review, as mentioned, despite the rain. On the top, you have the emergency triangle room. And let's close this up. Okay, some of you will ask, why didn't you show the seats? So if you knock down the seats, you can see how that looks. But let's cover this up. I'm going to go to the back. There's manual closing on both ends, and you can see that. Now on this end, there is the petrol. I think you need to unlock it from the other side. So just another look. Car looks amazing. Now let's check the rear. Good solid opening and closing sound. Maybe the door handle is a little clunky. You can see the seals. You can press a key here, push it to the side to lock from the inside for the kids. And over here, you can see the inside space. So this is flat. The seatbelt is in the way, so gotta watch for that one. Now, uh, I'm gonna come back to the seats for a moment. So this is hard plastic, plastic, and then a little textile there in a lure package. This is leather. It's nice and softly padded, power windows, little room for the bottle area, speaker down there. This is textile leather, and then again some textile, beautiful contrast stitching on the Allure package. You see the view at the top. I'm gonna jump inside. It's really starting to catch on rain. Now, I was sitting at the front, and in that case, uh, you can see there's a really tight feet room and a knee room. I'm not able to uh, move and I'm going to lock the doors. 
So the closing sound is quite good. So I'm a two meter tall person, 6.6 .6 in feet, and I am super tall. Uh, if I was not sitting in the front, I would have okay knee room, but this is really backed uh, up all the way. On the rear, you can see air vents with the climate. You can see two USB-Cs, one is for media, one is for fast charging. A little cubby there, and there is a transmission tunnel. It's wider, not too tall. Now the inside, it's quite comfortable. You can see nice and long windows, the seat pillar as well, and it's a good overview on the rear. On the top, you have little LED lights that would come on when the car ignition is on. We have all four sides slowly closing handles. Now over here, you have the armrest. This is rubberized, so cup holders are there. And it's all nicely soft, so you could squeeze the third person, but it would be a little bit tight. You can push this stab up, and then if you want to put a longer object, you can do that as well. Now, they did try to maximize the headspace here and here, but in general, the 308 uh, is not that good for tall people. Now, the uh, wagon version is a little bit better, but if I want to straighten up, uh, you can see that's uh, a challenge. It's not possible. If I was an average person, I would be barely fit, but uh, that's the only, I think, downside of the 308 series. Now, uh, look at the front on the alert package. Yes, it's nicely raining outside. Um, to wrap it up, uh, you don't have the adjustable seat belt for some reason, and there are no hooks on the uh, B pillar or on the top there. Let's get on the front. Now opening and closing sound is solid. Seal is good. This is soft. You have on the front only ambient lights. Again, cloth and then same design here. This is nice and robust. This is soft. All power windows automatic. You can lock the rear. You can lock or unlock from the inside, adjust the power mirrors. And you can see the bottle bottle area is okay. There is a speaker here. Tire pressure information is there. These are manual seats. This is for up and down. You have a lumbar electronic. You have the electronic this. You can extend that. And there is a tilt there. You can see the seats, quite nice looking. AGR comfort and same design. Nice bolsters, bigger on the top. This is the automatic, so you can see the battle is there. You can adjust the headlights height there, uh, precondition the battery, unlock the fuel. You can put your keep up here if the battery is low. And on the bottom, you can unlock to adjust the steering column. View at the top. And let's jump inside because I'm starting to get wet. I'm not made of sugar, but um, I think I'll survive. Switching to wide lens. And you can see the nice point of view. So there will be a point of view driving. Separate video, of course. So subscribe to the channel if you want to see that. And zooming back in. So a new badge on the steering wheel. This is, of course, two spoke, flat top and bottom. And we have nicely textured leather. Uh, there's a little piano black and a little, some sort of satin gray finish. Now over here you have the cruise options, distance, speed limiter, uh, and uh, we'll pause and go. You have the voice commands, phone calls, volume, and station lists. And there are sport paddles. Uh, there are shiny black, facing the driver, but on the rear, there's just bare plastic. Now, uh, over here, you have the uh, light controls. Keep them on automatic. Some people drive with their uh, daytime running lights, and then everything illuminates, but uh, 
keep them on automatic because at night you're not having your lights on. A little button is here for the cockpit views. And on the other side, uh, press for the trip computer and of course, wiper controls classic. Uh, now, a little wet here, but as I mentioned, this is soft and then it continues soft on top of the dash. Uh, you would get a heads up display in the uh, GT version. <clears throat> I can see the speaker in the uh, A pillar and on top as shown before. Uh, piano black, uh, there is a little bit of it. So not that bad because it's on the top where you won't scratch it. So you can see everything's going to the side there and over here you can adjust them. You can open or close them there. And uh, you have the digital cockpit and the Allure, it's uh, standard. And then you have the GT pack, uh, the 3D cockpit. Now it's not available because of the shortage of parts, but I think this is quite okay. I'm gonna show it to you in a moment when we turn on everything. And then I like the fact this is nice gray finish and also air vents integrated on the top, extending towards the driver. It's a nice connected piece. And it's like a little ridge extending of the top. There's a nice textile here following the rest of the dash. This is nice and soft. And there are now two screens and uh, finally a new upgraded fast infotainment. Now to show you here, slowly opening, uh, kind of plasticky. Now it doesn't look cheap plastic, but it's just no carpet inside. Uh, this little area here, you can put some stuff. There's a quite generous space inside and I think there is an AC vent there. So you can cool your drinks. Uh, of course you get here at Peugeot, some sort of manuals inside or service book now at the bottom here uh, we have a nice physical roller it's rubberized you can press to mute uh, this is for the volume and you have shortcuts for the car climate max uh, defrost or max blow on the front defrost on the rear open or close air recirculation climate on or off and hazards so this should be flashing now uh, there we go you can see the hazards from the driver position. Of course, the lights turn on and you can hear the sounds. You can see it in the cockpit. Now, uh, these LED lights kind of flash uh, on the camera, but they're not flashing in person. There, This is rubberized, so you can put a smartphone there or there. It's also rubberized at the bottom. You can get a in the GT pack wireless charger on the top. There is your start stop engine button there. Park uh, and B is for recuperation. It's a eight speed automatic. And there are your driving modes. And there's electronic parking brake. If you notice, there's no auto hold. Peugeot doesn't have auto hold. Uh, I think there's a, a hill assist, but no auto hold. So for the automatic, you have to <laughs> engage the electronic parking brake. Once you press uh, the acceleration pedal or the gas pedal, uh, this car releases the brake. So. Uh, that's the way it works. Um, 12 volt outlet is there again, no spring, so it doesn't close automatically. And there is a USB C for uh, charging. And over here, this is kind of rubberized, but there's a cover and you have adjustable cup holders. This is also rubberized mat that you can remove here. You can see that. And uh, I like to put my phone here so I can maybe see some messages when it's there or there. You can see a lot, or maybe like this. There's a little compartment here. This is soft. It's nice, uh, some sort of gray stitching. And the alert, there's gray stitching and then just like turquoise, some sort of like green or blue, whatever you call that. And I really in generally love the seats. The design is just outstanding. Over here you can of course adjust the headrest. And coming back here, this is soft. There's a button here you press, it opens up, and uh, there's a parking card here. You can see um, there is a USB-C there. Um, not sure if these are like air vents, I think this is closed. There's a rubber mat here that you could remove, and I'm going to remove it because if I manage to. I wanted to show you on the plug-in hybrid version. Look at that, there's another battery here. Um, I don't know 
what exactly is it for, but maybe it's to aid for the start, stop, and similar stuff. Uh, there is a rubber here, so if you have a cable inside, it won't squash it. If you close that up, now it's starting to thunder outside. Now, uh, one thing I forgot I was kind of rushing. Uh, you have the zipper for the isofix if you need to have a child seat. And to show the headspace on the front, two meter tall person again, plenty of headroom. Now, what you would like to see is the infotainment. Uh, I like to be brief on this one, uh, I won't be too long. You can see the blind spot there, a little light. Um, so I hope the AC fans won't be too loud. You can see the Peugeot, um, and I'll have to go like this. Uh, because Peugeot is the only brand, as far as I know, uh, that has the steering wheel at the bottom and there's a cockpit on the top. So from my view angle, it's sort of like this. So if I switch to wide lens once again, you can see that is sort of point of view I'm having. Zoom back in. So I'm gonna come closer and to show you. The digital cockpit is a good sharp graphics from the eye distance and it looks okay. Now, if I use the left stock there, uh, you can change views. Now you can see here uh, battery status and battery range. Uh, if you want to drive only electric, you can see your petrol there and range with the uh, fuel. Now if you press, uh, you can remove the message and you can see speed, kilometers per hour, you can see power and you can see uh, up when you're using power, down when you're recuperating. And if you press a little B, uh, you can recuperate automatically when deaccelerating. Now, if you press, you can change view. This is uh, maps. This is battery status. You can charge the battery uh, with the petrol while you're driving. And then you can see here different stats. You can see your uh, zero emission total travel. And if you press the right stock, you can see here trip one, trip two. Now, this is quite substantial. Uh, I'm gonna come back to that. And you can see the energy flow in that corner. If you press again, you can see the, um, this is supposed to be like the distance, but you can see the SWV, the different avatar, and then this is the classic one. And now, uh, consumption, uh, you can see it again by pressing this stock. Consumption is uh, quite high. Uh, yesterday I had around six liters. Uh, the journalist or YouTuber uh, before me had around four liters or something like that. He's not gentle uh, with his driving style, but I am. I think I could get it maybe around two or three, but I'm so limited with the time. I have to return the car, so uh, I have to reset the trip. I'm gonna do that in the night point of view review and see how much we can get so uh, you'll have to subscribe to see that if you're really interested now uh, you can see ambient lights because it's getting dark uh, there of course you can change colors there is a little ambient light here as well and everything illuminates white so besides these these go amber and green and a little red there there are pocket lights here uh, on the front only, not on the rear. Now, uh, to the uh, best thing uh, that happened to the 308 is finally a fast uh, infotainment that's not laggy. Now, uh, you can see here there's a home button. I don't think there was a pull-down menu. Actually, there is a pull-down menu. Um, you can see I'm connected to the Apple CarPlay. Uh, here are, like, you can control the brightness. You can control the Wi-Fi. I think you need to turn on the car. My devices, okay, there we go. Um, you can check your devices and I uh, can have profiles. So you can have multiple profiles if it's a family or company car. You can see at the top 4G, you can see uh, all that stuff. I've pressed it accidentally to the Apple CarPlay. So it's, it's pretty fast considering I'm filming and it's connected wirelessly via Bluetooth. 
Um, that's quite cool. I'm not going to turn on Waze and Google Maps, but you can see I can have plug share if you're looking for charging stations. And it's quite nice. The graphic uh, resolution is quite amazing. Now, here's the Peugeot navigation. It's quite good. It's fast. It's, well, it's, yeah, there we go. It's fast. Uh, maybe it took a moment because uh, the ignition is not on, it's just electronics. Uh, we have three pages, so you can swipe those. Uh, radio stations, maps. Uh, over here, you can press to maximize. In this case, the car, it would recuperate. Um, and I use the petrol to charge the battery. Applications, driver, uh, you can see all these apps. There is a shortcut, you just press three fingers and then brings you the applications. Uh, I've showed you the Apple CarPlay. There is also Android Auto via Bluetooth, works wirelessly. You can connect here, excuse me, you can use the climate here or you can press on the climate below and then it gives you the full menu. You can control here sync. There's a dual climate zone, so you can control that differently or just like that. You can choose normal, fast, or soft. I'm just gonna lower it manually. Seat options, you can heat them, air quality, and here you can precondition. So this would be automatic air circulation. You can hide that or you can see that. Back to the home. Now over here you can hold this and then it starts to wiggle and then it gives you an option to change stuff. Now uh, in this you can see, let's see the maps. You can go to the full screen. The maps are fast. Look at this, this is fast. You can zoom out, uh, have 3D buildings. You can see Zagreb in Croatia's capital and it's pretty fast. Um, recenter. Now you can change here for 3D, north, or where you're facing. You can mute alerts only. Uh, you can change here to day, back to automatic. You also have here at home, work, uh, my places. Um, you can go to route options. You can see vehicle profile, charging connectors, type two or home charger. And you can see map, all is night colors, uh, switch automatically. And show on map, you can see what you want to see, 3D buildings, uh, sidebar, stuff like that. I'm not gonna go for detail. I went through everything in the Zurich Auto Show. Now, of course, you can of course get to settings here, navigation. There's uh, multiple ways to get to the settings like again with holding three fingers you can choose other apps and now over here just briefly you can go to the guests profile of course you can create your own profile for family or company display customization you can press here then you can customize all these displays these are like your widgets as you move through these these change on the top you can press here and then same for the um, main home screen. And uh, you can change screen colors, have this kind of blue, green, and white. Uh, if you change that changes as well. Now, uh, this is memorized to the driving mode you're currently in. Connectivity, actually back to customization, because you have, uh, of course, let me see here, interior colors. Uh, you can change the lights to green, uh, dark green, white, or to the whatever that color was, also some sort of, I don't know, rear, rear choice of colors, uh, Peugeot, and yeah, these look quite nice, um, I think the purple goes with gray exterior, and here you can see exterior animation, interior animation, connectivity, just a second right-handed person um, yeah connectivity 
you can see here your devices and stuff like that uh, system you can change uh, units language and that's it you can control the brightness interior uh, updates allow automatic downloads updates using external uh, Wi-Fi so you can get have over the air updates and we have here maybe some service things that are not currently uh, on and energy graph uh, in this one you can see the status of the battery you can see the statistics of the electric and petrol as you can see we were burning petrol to charge the battery and then we were using the battery uh, I didn't get the onboard um, type 2 cable so I didn't charge the car I was using the petrol to charge the car which is not um, smart because the point of this car is that you charge it overnight or when you're at work and then in that case you would have a really nice consumption that's low in this case you can uh, maximum you can charge 10 20 or maximum e-safe would charge and I was using that so again uh, if you're thinking of the plug-in hybrid don't buy it if you don't have at least a Shuko outlet otherwise this makes no sense you're going to be burning too much fuel so it's just more economical just to go for the pure petrol or diesel as i've said uh, before and that was the whole infotainment it's quite fast it's quite uh, quite nice uh, the bottom you can see all those bring you to the shortcuts if you press here you can see that changes uh, there's a little amber light there on our off for the climate and for the air circulation of course cutting this in <coughs> driving modes you can see here if i press hybrid sport changes colors hybrid and then electric if you're driving electric the speedometer changes into the blue color then it's uh, driving electric otherwise it's white and for the recuperation you press b nothing shows uh, on the cockpit in that case and if you go to reverse you can see the reverse camera and maps when you're backing up uh, resolution is finally decent uh, and screen resolution is great when you turn all the way the camera will turn as well and when you come to an object like a wall it'll uh, change the view uh, from the top and it'll give you like a back end of the car so to demonstrate, if you're uh, backing up, you can see the camera tilts as well. And you can see the backing camera maps for you where you want to go. So if you want to correct a little bit here, it still knows the picture that it mapped. And watch this once we get closer to the wall. Now we're cutting in some music, uh, if you want to switch from radio to media, just press here. Now we're going to demonstrate some music for you, so these are the basic speakers. So I can't play it for too long not to get a copyright strike, but it has a nice bass, it's okay sound. If you want more quality sound, you should go for the upgraded speakers. Uh, I'll show you everything besides the holding here uh, you can see the clock and date you have this nice uh, clock options just four of them so this is quite elegant I gotta say that I'm really impressed uh, with the Peugeot and I like the way with the heading they finally uh, solved the main problem with the lag infotainment this was good before it's still good uh, I like this I love the 3d cockpit but really if you're thinking not buying this car because of the 3d cockpit you're making a mistake uh, everything else is nice about the car the inside is so good uh, it feels so good the everything is quality made and i think peugeot should add a auto hold for the automatic and try to add some headspace on the rear maybe a little bit of uh, i'm a too tall person uh, because of the steering wheel i've backed up more so Otherwise, in the cars, I'm usually not that far behind, so I can usually 
uh, sit behind myself uh, just for the uh, leg room and my height of two meter tall person uh, dimensions uh, comparison. And uh, that was it. Uh, now to show you the wiper since it's raining. I'm gonna do one wipe. You can see that's nice and satisfying for the OCD people, such as myself. I'm a little bit OCD, not too much, but you can see the rear. Now, a uh, good overview on the rear, good review, overview for the side mirrors, and there's plenty of light coming inside. Uh, if you wanna go, if you wanna get the pen and roof, excuse me, uh, you have to go for the GT pack. So uh, to wrap it up, you have the nice uh, basilisk uh, mirror in the middle. It's quite nice. Uh, passenger information uh, and airbag information. You can turn on the LED lights now. Let me show you that one now. See, when the car is on, then everything is working. And uh, over here would be for the panel options if you have the, that and emergency uh, call and road assistance. On the top, we have a light. Uh, in the GT, it will be black or like dark gray. And over here, you have a nice uh, beauty mirror documents holder. And this does not extend. I know a lot of you are asking. Uh, I don't know why the car industry is not um, doing this. Many people send me DMs and saying, I know, ah, I saw your review. That's pretty cool. I don't know. It's something they don't think of. I have a feeling that the people who are engineers and working behind cars are just not using those cars at least they're not thinking of the details um, and this was quite detailed uh, so i'm gonna wrap it up here you can see here uh, your status uh, when you're plugged you can only see when the car uh, is unlocked and the doors are closed what's the status of uh, the charge and what's the time uh, now to wrap up the video i'm gonna open the bonnet really quick rain isn't that strong so i don't get that wet and um let me see where it was so it was uh left side of the 308 press up you can see that water pouring down you can see the pure tech so this is i think the 1.6 pure tech petrol combined with the electric motor. The blue thing is your washer fluid. And you can see you have to use the little leg if you wanna keep it open. And have the sound and heat insulation. There's a little hand, uh, excuse me, there's a little sign not to touch hot. So let it drop, closes perfectly. And you can also see the car when it's all wet. It looks pretty good. You can see that when I uh, go away from the car, it locks when I come closer and have a key in my pocket or just take it out. It should unlock, but sometimes, okay, I didn't press it. It unlocked and you can see the light now turned on. So just a little walk around to wrap it up. Yeah, it, it looks beautiful so everyone thank you for watching be a cool person smash the like button leave your comments below how do you like the new 308 SWV and uh, if you want to see more subscribe to the channel click the little bell to get notified and click on all otherwise you won't get notified and as always stay safe I'm gonna see you in the next one bye